Christian and church. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ his Son. Our living Lord and our reigning and supreme Savior. Would you bow your heads please. Father as you and your Son and Spirit are one. Please allow your servant, your word and wisdom to become one that we may affirm the imminence of your kingdom, the power of your spirit and the lordship of your son. I trust you now for preaching, guide my mind and my mouth for a few moments that I may think your thoughts and say your words, Father, not my will, but thy will be done touch, strengthen, and save in accordance to your will for us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. If there are persons, perchance, who are here this morning who are not Christian, and to our streaming family, God bless, good to see you, and thank you for sharing the holiday with us as we are together in worship. Perchance there are persons here who have not experienced Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I do want to extend an invitation to you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you have already accepted the Lord as Savior and you've not made a commitment to a local Christian church, you'd be welcomed here. You can join by letter, by Christian experience, or a candidate for baptism. All that we do as a church family in this community and globally is to lift high the name of Jesus. It's not about us, it's not about our name. It's all about the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? To that end, as we engage in this dialogue of preaching, uh, hopefully something can be said that will stimulate and cause you to have a closer faith walk with the Lord. Judges chapter, chapters 13 through 16 give a four-chapter biographical account of a man named Samson. We know that he is from the small tribe of Dan. We know that uh, the Danaanites are a minority immigrant tribe among immigrants. We know that this area is being controlled politi politically and militarily by the people of Philistra or the Philistines. We know that We know or do we know I want to talk from the subject why me and I know some we rushed and we were very craft they're saying well why not me that's nice and cute uh, but it doesn't resolve the core painful issue of why me before I read a scripture or two from these chapters, Judges, uh, Joshua Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Old Testament. Before I read a couple of passages um, this morning for our hearing, I'm going to argue that Samson was an unhappy man who lived an unfulfilled life, who knew pain, who lived with loneliness, who suffered mental torment and refused to get any kind of therapeutic help, typical man, who died as an aging out millennial. He was in his early 40s when he died. I want to argue that Christians of the 21st century run the risk and live in closets like Samson. We know pain. We know loneliness. We know rejection. We know low places. And like Samson, most men won't get any help. I'm going to argue from this text, well, oh, Pastor, don't go ahead and argue it then. Stop talking about what you're going to argue. <laughs> that
that God was with Samson from day one and even prenatally and in his dying. And God's presence with Samson did not exempt Samson from pain, loneliness, and rejection, and an early death. To argue my point this morning, I, I want to share with the, per, uh, well, uh, not really a personal friend, but uh, uh, first, former First Lady Michelle Obama, um, I want to share some with her in conversation with her this week, uh, and we're talking about the sermon. Some, um, well, we really didn't talk. It's, uh, <laughs> I read a quote from her. <laughs> it's, uh, it was a monologue. I want to quote from her, and she has this tremendous book out, uh, her memoirs on becoming. It's worthy of male and female readership. It's not just for women, but there's some lessons for men uh, in this context. And if I talk plain and we don't like to hear that, most men have a feminine side and most women have a masculine side. Um, we don't like to talk like that, but I'm just being real. Uh, Samson, and then I want to uh, also share uh, a quote at the end or somewhere during this sermon from Thich Nhat Hang. He uh, was a Vietnamese Buddhist monk and has written this book, which will be one of our reads for 2019, Living Buddha, Living Christ. Uh, Living Buddha, Living Christ, a Vietnamese Buddhist monk who was recommended by Dr. Martin Luther King for the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, he was recommended, but he didn't receive it, but a tremendous thinker, wrote some 25 books um, to help me um, and help us in understanding why me. Judges 13, and allow me to read two passages in in some exposition. Thirteen three. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Although you are barren, having born no children, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, or eat anything unclean. For you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor is to come on his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth. It is he who shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. We learn something from the very beginning about Samson, that he was a promised child from God. Two, we learned that his mom uh, initiated practice, and he also practiced Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, 12, this Nazarene rite, where the male would not have his head shaven, nor drink strong drink, nor touch any Thing unclean, including a corpse of a human being or an animal, lest he break that right. Samson was a blessed child prenatally. He was a gift from God to Manoah, his dad and mom. But he also had a purpose. He wasn't just in the world to be here, to take up space and to inhale. Good to see you. Uh, but he was here. He was sent here by God, notice clearly, to begin to deliver Israel from the Philistines. To begin to deliver. He wouldn't do it all. His work would be undone when he died. But he was to begin the work. 
Notice chapter 16. Judges. Uh, where do I want to start this? Let's start at verse 25. 1625. And when their hearts were merry, when they were high, they said, call Samson. Let him entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison and he performed for them. They had made him stand between the pillars. And Samson said to the attendant who held him by the hand, let me feel the pillars on which the house rests so that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women. All of the, all the lords of the Philistines were there. And on the roof there were about 3,000 men and women who looked on while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord. This is the first and only time that Samson prayed that's recorded in 20 years of living. Listen to Samson's prayer. Oh God, so that with this one act of revenge, I may pay back the Philistines. Back up, Cliff Jones. Lord, remember me and strengthen me only this once. How did he do all he had been doing all before or didn't he perceive that the Lord was strengthening him for the things that he was able to do up to this point pick with me please oh God so that this act of revenge I may pay back the Philistines for my two eyes instead of killing him when they captured him they blinded him one of the challenges for 21st century America is that we're alive, but we're blind. We're seeing, but we're not looking. Second, you still with me? Then Samson grabbed the two middle pillars and upon which the house rested and he leaned his weight against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. Then Samson prayed the second time. Lord, let me die with the Philistines. The only two times in these four chapters in 20 years of adult millennial life that Samson prayed. Why me? It's hard to fathom God being with an individual and that individual being lonely, sad, and having pain. That doesn't sell for good church attendance in the 21st century. Samson, from the very beginning, as you look at chapter 13, and I do ask that you will take the time um, and read these four chapters and let it say what it says. From the very beginning, for chapter 13 is roughly 20 years of the life of Samson. This man, called of God, sent here to do God's will, to help God's people who were captives and subjected to a foreign enemy power, Philistines. 
for 40 years, well, 20 adult years. This man lived on earth, walked, moved, and had all the outside trappings of success and happiness. But I will argue to my grave that beyond the shell was a hollow, empty, sad, looking for happiness brother who only found fulfillment after he lost his sight. Come on, Rev. Jones. This is Thanksgiving. You know, lift him up a little bit. Life in this world with God on your side or you on the side of God or doing God's will as you understand God's will and serving God's people as you understand serving God's people does not exempt any human being from all tragedy. The challenge is not allowing acts of tragedy to be the totalitarian definition for your life. Say that another way, Cliff Jones. The challenge is not allowing a scar on your hand to define your five fingers. That I have a hand with a scar, but my hand is not the scar. I have pain in my life, but pain does not define my life. I have Jesus in my heart, but I still have to walk through lonesome valleys where people you strive to help can sometimes turn on you and hurt you. A life where we must learn to drink bitter but not digest bitter. <laughs> Samson, you see him? I don't know his size. They say you, a lot of this stuff, they say he was a lot like Hercules. And I don't know if you, some of y'all remember seeing a movie of Hercules. He's a, he's a you know, great, you know, big, strong, muscular guy. From the outside, looked like he had everything going on for his life. But Samson had some pain. He had a great deal of loneliness. I'm not sure he ever felt appreciated. Read chapters 13 through 16. Don't impose upon it your Christian understanding, but let it, let, and let, let it say what it says. Let people say what they need to say rather than telling them what to say and how to say and what they meant. I know what I meant to say. I don't need you to tell me what I meant to say. I bet to just listen to what I'm saying rather than telling me what I meant. Are y'all listening to me? And we're bad about that. What you really mean is, no, 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 no. What you want me to mean is, but this is what I mean. I like to hear from you what I want to hear from you, not what you want to say to me. Why me? Of all people, Lord, you've chosen. I'm Samson. You've chosen me, Lord. Why, why, why me? Why do I have to go through all of this? Age 20, fast forward, chapter 14. An immigrant among immigrants, he looks around and he sees this beautiful young lady from Timna, uh, one of the small communities uh, where he was residing uh, with the tribe of Dan. He looked at the girl. I don't know whether she looked back at him or not, but he looked at the girl, ran home and said, Daddy, get her for me. Said she's the one, uh, young brother. Yeah, you know, your, your first little girlfriend, come on, fellas, you know, they can do you in real bad. Uh, I still remember my girl, my girlfriend, age 15. I was 15. I still remember that girl. Met her in September, was in love in November. 
Oh yeah, I love that girl. I, I couldn't sleep at night. I'd think about it. I just, you know, I, I, I had already taken to the prom as seniors. We were only freshmen, but I'd already dressed her up and was taking her to the prom in my brother's car. You know, she dropped me. <laughs> the only thing I can remember is the Vaseline on her cheek when I got a kiss. Oh, that Vaseline was good. <laughs> You didn't get no lip kiss, you know, the first little time, and do something like that, boy, Vaseline, you're like, mm, baby, mm. I love Vaseline. Father said, can't you find somebody, can I talk plain, of your own clan? Say that. Can't you find somebody of your own race? But that, out of all the girls, you, you, you mean you got to find her, an immigrant? But the text says clearly in the 14th chapter, God had predetermined my word. But that's what it meant. This relationship for a purpose. God does not always explain to people who are in a process of delivering and working for him. He does not always explain all of the nuances that you and others will have to go through for his will. Father, not my will, but yours be done. Santa was a strong-willed millennial. He went on down on his own. And while he was there, pick up notice in 146 while he was going down to see her, the text says a lion roared against him. And he rent the jaws of a lion as one would destroy with his hands a small goat. Pain. Suffering. Yet God was with him. This is where former First Lady Michelle Obama uh, makes an interjection uh, on, from her talk show on Good Morning America. Uh, she was talking about her book Becoming, her memoirs. She said these words and I'm, I'm still wrestling um, with her. Here's what Michelle Obama said about life, aspects of life. We sit in our own pain thinking that somehow we're broken. Michelle Obama was talking about something very painful, miscarriage. She was speaking specifically to women. Do you hear what she said? We sit in our own thinking that somehow we're broken. Samson sat in his own pain. Oh, he was walking around, shoulders were back, back was straight, looking powerful, but he moved in his own pain, thinking Something was broken. Why wouldn't mom and dad want me to marry her? What's wrong with me? I'll come back to it. And Michelle, first lady, excuse me, Michelle Obama, former first lady, said, in the second comment, share the truth about your bodies. I'll come back to that about share the truth. Share the truth. Samson. Forgive me, the only way I can say it, lived in hell. But looking from the outside, you'd never know it. Let me repeat a couple of things. Why do you say that, Pastor? Wanted to get married, but his mom and dad didn't approve of the one he married. Hello? He married this young lady anyhow? 
She disappointed him before the honeymoon was over. In his anger, he walked away and went home, back to his mom and dad. And you know what he heard, don't you? Come on, y'all. You, you know what he heard before he could get in the door good. I leave that to y'all. Told you. Mm-hmm. Next time, baby. Mm -hmm. Hard head. Mm -hmm. Make your bed hard. Mm -hmm. you, you know. You know what he heard. Already hurting. Chapter 15, Ferris Forward. He changes his mind to go back and, and, and regain and reestablish a relationship. But when he gets there, the father-in-law has given his wife a no, the marriage, and has given the wife to the best man in the wedding. Pain! His own kindred, those that the Lord had sent him to, de to deliver. Uh, 15, chapter 15, still. They turned on him and delivered him to the oppressor. What did you say? His own people turned on him and delivered him to the oppressor. Tell me about pain. Can I talk plain this morning from the text? Seeking some relief. I'm gonna try to say this in a dignified way. He made a physiological investment in rental assets for an evening. Y'all tell your neighbor what I'm, that, that I'm saying. I'm trying to talk plain in here. Trying to find relief, but in the moment of passion, there was no passion. Fell in love with Delilah. And Delilah made a financial arrangement that was better for her than the relationship with Samson. Betrayed him. Those that were perpetrators against him took his eyes rather than taking his life. They let him live without dignity. He knew pain. He knew rejection. He knew sadness. But the challenge, there are those that would say, but Cliff, you said God was with him from the very beginning. Life, life is not always a charmed existence. Oh, I know you're Christian now and, and you, I know, no, but, but, but when you're really honest about life, it's not always a charmed existence. Life brings disappointments. Life brings some pain. Yes, you're Christian. Yes, the Lord is with you. But you said he never prayed. But in spite of his lack of praying, God's presence was still with him. We've got to learn how to live with some things. I'm praying to God that we don't have to live with this possible senator from Mississippi in this runoff. I'm praying to God that somehow this insensitive lady who could talk about a public lynching and attending it at the invitation of a rancher who held a campaign rally for her in a state that lynched more than any other state. I'm praying. But the Lord has disappointed me before in some of my prayers that we won't have to live with her. I'm praying that we won't be too terribly impacted by all of these conservative federal judges that are being appointed that will have a direct impact upon the judicial system and yes, poor and African American and Latinos. Do you know that the hate crime do you know that in America, hate crime has increased 17% in 2017? Stay with me, y'all. I'm going to call Jesus in a minute. I'm praying that this beautiful Stacy Abrams from Georgia will stay in the fight and 
run for something else. I'm praying. But Reverend Jones, in the meantime, as I'm going through life, as I'm finding out, as I'm a tool that the Lord doesn't just, just answer all of my prayers, as I want all of my prayers answered all the time, as I'm recognizing that I, I have to live with some pain and some disappointments, what are you asking of me? What does the Lord require of me? This is where I find Tignakong, this Buddhist Vietnamese monk. I want to say to y'all quickly, because I know some of y'all, some good Christians are going to turn me off. He's talking about a, a heathen. Uh, mm -mm, I'm not talking about a heathen. I'm talking about a religious man who was close to God. Christians have no monopoly on who is close to God. And you be very careful when you start disking folk from God simply because they're a Vietnamese or Buddhist mm, or Muslim mm, or Jewish. They did the same thing to African Americans. They said, you people were heathens. Come on, y'all. You might as well be up front with me. This, this Buddhist monk, this godly man, he said a couple of things and I'm, I'm going to say these and I'm going to quit. I'm not finished. This is a long sermon and I need a lot of time, but, but I'm, I'm going to quit. In 1995, he said the root of this book, Living Buddha, Living Christ, what had happened, he had found a lot of disappointment, uh, notice living uh, among Buddhists and Christians, that the, the script said one thing, but the people lived another thing. My argument that if Christians and Muslims and Jews practiced the script, we wouldn't have the violence that we have in the world today. But there are those extremists on both sides, all three sides, that, 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 that take the script out of context. Oh, and, 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 he, and, and he said that, that he really learned about the Christian faith, first of all, through Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whom... Christians in America called the communists. And even some Negroes had the nerve to get on the bandwagon sitting in the back. This religious man, listen to him. He said the root of living with Buddha, living Christ. Go back to that time when in the face of death, Human hearts are made more alive. I want to come back to that. It was in Samson's darkest hour facing death that this hollow big man became alive. Not with his eyes, not with his strength, but knowing that he was in the presence of God. Your joy is not in your strength, not in your wealth, not in your hookups, not in your education, not who you think you are, but your joy is being in relationship to God in Christ Jesus. I don't care how happy or sad you're going to be at four o'clock today. Monday will still come. Be still and know that I am God. We sit in our own, talk to us, Michelle, Obama, Obama. We sit in our own pain thinking that somehow we're broken. You've got to work on that, y'all. If you've really had, can I talk plain? If you really know pain, not just your thumb hurting or your knee swelling up from arthritis, but if you really know pain, that when the wound is healed, the pain and the scar is still there. It can make you feel broken and feel less than who you are. And you will question whether God is with you. Samson 
hadn't prayed to this point. He's been abused. He's been aligned, maligned. He's been maliciously treated. He's been blinded. He's now walking around in the dung. If I was in the street, I would, I would talk plain to y'all. Walking in the digested juices of oxen. Oozing up between his toes and sandals. Having the stench of everything around him. And it is in his blindness and his low place that he experiences God anew and afresh. Not based upon what his mama said, but by his own experiences. This Buddhist monk said, and I quote, he was talking about pain and troubles and disappointments, quote, it is because of the practice of meditation. Please chronicle. It is because of the practice of meditation, stopping, calming, and looking that I've been able to be nourished and protect the source of my spiritual energy to continue my work. How, how, how do you keep on going? It was in Samson's blindness. He was stuck. You know what, y'all? Many of you are retirees and you're still too busy. You're tired. Doing, 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 going. And if there's nothing on, not on your planner, you feel bad. Lord, I ain't got nothing to do today, Lord. Well, I, and you'll make up something. But to be close to God, Talk to me, somebody. Every now and again, you've got to pull yourself away from your busy itinerary. And if I talk brutally plain, there are times when you don't pull yourself away that God will yank you away from your busy self and say, stop. Stop. Stop! Stop, I said. Be still and know that I'm God. You're not your own. Stop! Stop worrying. Stop having so much anxiety. Stop, stop crying. Stop complaining. Stop blaming everybody. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop crying as we used to say in the street, pull mouth. Stop. Second thing he says, calming. If you've ever been tired and thirsty, you, if you can get a glass of water, you don't want no Gatorade, don't want no pop, a cool glass of water, and you can say, Hyper. And always on the go. Rush through everything. Some of y'all didn't enjoy Thanksgiving dinner because you were rushing to go somewhere else. You didn't taste the sage in the dressing because you were rushing. Most of you are like me. I hope, anyhow, I hope I'm not the only strange fruit. When you go to the doctor, when you know you have a doctor's appointment, there's a couple of things you do. First of all, you restrict your diet and try to lose at least three to five pounds. <laughs> huh? And then you're going to wear light weight clothes. You're going to wear light shoes. <laughs> you know, no heavy sweater, no jacket. If you do, you're going to take it off. Uh, and, and then you tip on the skin. How much? You know. And the other thing, your blood pressure goes up. 
normally your pressure is going to go up three to five points just because you're going to see the doctor. There's something about that will accelerate your blood pressure. Reverend Jones, relax a little bit. Your pressure's up. Uh, you, you did gain. Well, your scales are wrong anyhow. You know the doctor's scales are always five pounds over. So have y'all heard that? Just be calm a little bit, Pastor Jones. We're going to take your pressure again. Uh, I'm, I'm sure to go down. Be calm. <sighs> doing okay. I'm doing okay till I have to put on that little sheet, uh, that little paper gown, and half you half you hanging out in the back. And how your pressure gonna go down? And you trying to protect everything. And you you sitting down and you're folding, and, and then you're trying to. You you you, 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 you y'all know what I'm talking about. You're folding and it's paper, and sometimes that paper will tear in the wrong place. <laughs> and then you're sitting up there all funny, you know, talking about your pressure, your pressure don't go down. <laughs> then I do pretty good, and I know that it's going down after right, my exam is almost over, and then my doctor puts on his glove, and my pressure shoots up again. Remember Tik Hak Nong said that it is in the face of death that human hearts are made alive. As Samson with his blind eyes facing certain death, this lonely, big, aging out millennial in his dying finally found peace and happiness and a sense of fulfillment and at the end of the day that's all I think we really want out of life anyhow peace sense of calm sense of self worth sense of feeling appreciated not for what you bring to the table but simply because of who you are Samson at that moment not when he took the jawbone of a jackass and killed a thousand not when he took 300 jackals and tied their tails together and burned up the wheat fields not when he killed 30 with his bare hands not when he slew the lion he did all of those things, but it was in his death when he recognized the Lord had left him that he asked the Lord to come back into his life. And in his dying, he found fulfillment. And he prayed for the first time in 40 years out of all that he'd been through. And all that the Lord brought him through, 
even when he didn't pray, when he went to a, a bathroom, bathroom, you know, he went to, to the place. Out of all that he had been through, touching a dead carcass, drinking strong drink, the Lord brought him through because that's what God does. Why me? Because I'm a child of God. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry how much? How much? How much? To God, how? In prayer. Amen. Stand quickly. Let's just sing that and hopefully this morning there's someone that will say yes to the Lord. We'd love to have you as part of the friendship family. I've already extended the invitation in your own way. Walk on and up or in the balcony and just say, I'm going to give my life to Christ today and serve him as I am. The Lord has got you and he'll take care of you. Come on, somebody else ought to be walking. It's someone else you ought to be walking today. What a friend.
was transparent. But in his transparency, he found presence. Yet in presence with you, he still had some issues that he had to deal and grapple with along life's journey. But through it all, you stayed with him. But then ultimately, he found freedom in his darkness. He didn't find you with his eyes. <laughs> oh, he didn't find you with what he saw, but he found you in his heart. Thank you for looking into our hearts and finding our hearts. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for reaching way down in our mess and delivering us. Now we're preparing to leave one from another, but not from your presence. You're the only one who can speak of Benedictus. Would you speak it now in the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. Have a good day and a good week. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>